Hey there, and it is Halloween, which means it's time for some spooks and scares, tricks or treats, and I got something that'll really knock your socks off. I already pissed myself. A lot, actually. Video games and microtransactions, they go together like nothing. Microtransactions tend to have a pretty negative rap for fairly understandable reasons. Because of the predatory nature of things like battle passes and mobile games, a lot of people hate them, myself included. For anyone stuck under a rock all their life, microtransactions are a thing that game companies do to squeeze more money out of you. Whether it's from a store of some kind, a battle pass, or in-game currency that's hard to get, these companies will try and get you to spend more money on their games. Microtransactions will always to some extent feel predatory, but in my opinion they are at their worst when paying money gives players unfair advantages over others, and our first victim is guilty of this to the highest degree. Monsieur. Does this mean Overwatch is back? <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Arguably the biggest thing that Overwatch 2 has done is completely rework the loot system. Gone are the random loot crates and now we have a store and a battle pass that both use an in-game currency. Now I could make an entire video on why I hate in-game currency so I'll just move on to the store and the battle pass. The storefront in Overwatch doesn't seem that bad. It's entirely skins, profile pictures, and sprays. But the battle pass isn't so innocent. Right off the bat, we see one of the new heroes in the battle pass. For some stupid reason, Blizzard decided to lock a bunch of heroes to new accounts, including the new heroes. I didn't get affected by this change because I migrated from the first game, but still, this is some crap that I would expect to see from a game like Paladins, but here we are. Right now, I've played Overwatch 2 roughly the same amount of time as I've played the original, and I gotta say, I have enjoyed the sequel leagues better. It just kinda sucks that Blizzard is so greedy. But there is another franchise that is just as, if not more greedy than Overwatch, and it is ironically owned by Blizzard's just as ugly other half. Activision. Call of Duty's microtransactions aren't nearly as bad as Overwatch's. There isn't any S-tier guns in the Battle Pass that make you unkillable and grant you the powers of Zeus. Nah, it's mostly cosmetic stuff, but the reason the microtransactions are so bad is because of how much Activision just shoves them down your throat. Sometimes I just want to hop into a game of COD Mobile and just be a silly goofball with a stupid rainbow leaf. Oh, too bad this wasn't a pie-eating contest! But no, I need to be told that there are 12 different events going on at once and that I got a pistol with an anime waifu on it for doing absolutely nothing. The sad part is, is that Call of Duty wasn't this aggressive. It used to have some class, sort of. Even though Overwatch and Call of Duty have some of the most horrendous storefronts out there, I still have hope that they can change for the better because if Nintendo can do it, anybody can. Mario Kart Tour was Mario's third dip into the mobile game market, and it could not have gone worse. Mario Kart Tour would start you off with one car body, one glider, and one random character. The only way to obtain more stuff was through a loot box system. You could buy the loot boxes with an in-game currency called rubies, but the biggest problem was that these things were way too expensive, and it didn't help that Nintendo was extremely stingy when letting you earn rubies from challenges and login bonuses, and even paying real money for them wasn't even worth it. This system sucked big time. I mean, I'm still mad about not being able to get Sailor Daisy, but over the last year or so, getting the pipes to earn characters and cart pieces has gotten a lot easier, and in fact, just recently, Nintendo ditched the loot box mechanic entirely for a simple storefront. You can still get pipes from challenges and the storefront, but now I don't need to buy 50 pipes for a chance to get Mario with a pumpkin on his head. Now I can just buy him. Wait a minute. 
Nintendo has also gotten a lot less stingy with the rubies. Paying real money for them is still a joke, but look at that, I just got 100 rubies for doing practically nothing. I hope that Nintendo keeps this system, not only to extend Mario Kart Tour's lifespan, but also because it means I'll have a better chance of getting Sailor Daisy. Mario Kart Tour is a perfect example of an in-game economy that started out as a dumpster fire but got better over time. It's not perfect, but I would much rather take what we have now over what we had only a couple months ago. But now moving on, I hope you're ready because I'm about to lose all credibility. Microtransactions in Roblox is a bit of a complicated thing to explain. Because the site is nothing but user-generated games that have their own microtransactions, I'm going to stay as far away from that as possible, and instead I'm going to talk about the Avatar Shop. The Avatar Shop is the closest thing to an official store offered by Roblox themselves. This, in my opinion, is one of the better stores offered by a game because A, it's all cosmetic items, and B, there are plenty of free items. But one of the biggest problems here is because, just like the games, almost everything here is user-generated. And because of that, the creators of said items set the prices. So sometimes you get stuff like, HA! And HA! Stuff here can be stupid overpriced. Take this hat I have, for example. It is the red baseball cap. It is one of the oldest items in the game, and I bought it back when ticks were still a thing. I maybe paid like 10 Robux for it, but now the only way to get it is through a reseller, and the price as of me writing this script is... 992 Robux. That is a $12 hat. Okay, maybe Roblox is not as innocent as I thought, but you know what? I've rambled about anime guns and ugly baseball caps long enough. It's time to talk about the big one. The father of in-game stores. This game walked so the others could run. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you'll know exactly what game I'm talking about. Valve's very own Team Fortress 2. The TF2 economy is nothing to laugh at, and it is surprisingly complex. TF2 items have been around as long as the first update, the Gold Rush update, when the Blutsugger, Kritzkrieg, and Ubersaw were all added to the game. Now, weapons are cool, but the thing TF2 is most known for is the hats. The first ever wave of hats came during the Sniper vs. Spy update in 2009. They were the Batter's Helmet, the Soldier's Stash, Pyro's Beanies, the Demo Man's Fro, the Football Helmet, the Mining Light, this one for Medic that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. The Trophy Belt and the Fancy Fedora. In 2015, the Gunmetal update brought war paints into the game, but the update that would seal the deal and create the future of gaming for better or for worse was 2010's Man Economy update. This update added TF2's main storefront, the Manco Store. While the Manco store was not the first example of using real-world money for in-game items, I would argue that it was the first truly great example. Besides the Manco store, the Manconomy update brought with it the first ever cases in TF2's history. Nowadays, in-game stores and loot crates are seen as a bad thing, yet all this stuff TF2 popularized. So why is it hated in other games like Overwatch or Call of Duty and not in Team Fortress 2? If I had to take a wild guess, it's that when Valve added the store to TF2, people weren't sick of seeing it in every game they played. But also, cases in the Manco store are not the only way to get items in TF2. Almost every single item in the Manco store can be either crafted or obtained through the random drop system. Valve also offers the Steam Community Market, which is a good place to get items, especially ones only available through cases like Unusuals and War Paints. Or, if you don't want to give Valve any money at all, you have third-party sites like Marketplace.tf and Trade.tf. Places like these are also really good for getting high-quality items like Stranges or Unusual items. And, not including the Manco store, the price of TF2 items are based on supply and demand, not what Valve thinks they should be. So in conclusion, I think why microtransactions in TF2 are so accepted and not other games is the freedom. TF2 allowing items to be bought, sold, and traded as any player pleases doesn't force them to pay a stupid price for an item that might not be worth it. Don't want to buy a specific item? Well, that's fine. There's like 20 different versions all at different prices. Well, that was a small glimpse into the world of in-game transactions. I, I mean, I barely scratched the surface on this topic, but whether you hate them or you... Oh man, that one must have gone out. Well, it's a good thing I got these cheap dollar store battery-powered candles. Ah! Oh yeah!
I completely forgot to mention the worst mistake ever made by humankind and how it almost made something terrible even worse. At the height of NFT's popularity, some smooth brain at Ubisoft thought, hey, why don't we make our in-game items NFTs? Besides the fact that NFTs are stupid because paying that much for a JPEG of a monkey is dumb, there are several reasons to why this is a stupid idea. For starters, you don't own the NFT, you own the rights to use it, unlike my TF2 or Roblox items, in which I paid money for and own. Not to mention, you pay with crypto, which at any moment could nosedive into the dirt unlike in-game currency or real money. And guess what? That is exactly what happened! <laughs> Ubisoft aren't the only ones guilty of trying to ruin games. Sega, of all people, tried to incorporate NFTs in some way. Thankfully, that never went anywhere. Even Nintendo dipped their toes into this dirty pool. And when I mean dipped their toes in, I mean when they were asked about it, the only thing they said was, maybe. Nintendo said maybe, never did anything after that. NFT died faster than Battleborn servers, and the world immediately became a better place. The end. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Ah, uh, oh, looks like power came back, huh? Anyway, as I was saying, this was only a small glimpse into the world of video games and microtransactions. Whether you like them or not, microtransactions are a part of gaming, and in my opinion, they can have a place in the future of gaming, just some serious changes needs to be made to the formula first. But despite all of that, at least the formula is not being influenced by JPEGs of monkeys. <laughs>